coach Brenton Sanderson on the sports show tomorrow on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. Interactive radio. Email on air at 5AA.com.au. Peter Godfrey. Quarter past five. Let's head across the ditch to New Zealand and find out some of the things happening in that part of the world. Selwyn Manning from livenews.co.nz. Selwyn, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Peter. How's things uh, over your side of the ditch? Looking all right? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, we're going to get into the weather, I think. But the the weather, since last week, we haven't had any rain up here in the North Island at all. Um, Apparently over in the uh, Coromandel Peninsula, uh, that's to the east of Auckland and the Waikato region of the North Island. That's had a little bit of drizzle overnight, but there's just no sign of it here. Yeah, okay. And mm. uh, nothing at all to break the drought. We, well, we know what it's like. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. We'll get on as, that, as you said, in a moment. But uh, first, um, a bill uh, uh, on uh, on uh, marriage equality, a marriage equality bill yes. has uh, had its uh, second reading in Parliament with a yes. uh, vote on that as well. Uh, what was the outcome of that vote? Yeah, the outcome of the vote was uh, 77 MPs voted in favour of marriage equality and only 44 MPs voted against it. Okay. Um, and some of those MPs, quite a sizable number of them, like the New Zealand First Party, were not necessarily voting against the concept of what this uh, equality bill was all about, but they favoured that it go to a a, a public referendum uh, so the public of New Zealand could directly have a vote on it. So really what you're looking at there is quite a sizable number of uh, MPs saying, you know, this is where it should go. But anyway, it's all academic in a sense. The second reading, that means that it's already had its big one that we talked about on your program last year, uh, yeah, late last year, where it had its first reading in Parliament and was supported um, by 80 MPs at that stage. It uh, goes away then to select committee, comes back pretty much, you know, drafted and with all of its amendments, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, for it to be considered and serious um, approach by the, the Parliament. Uh, they did so last night, uh, voted in favour of it. Now it'll have its third reading uh, in next week or so, and it, probably within a month, just over a month, it will be law in New Zealand, making it fine and okay for gay, lesbian, transsexual people to marry in New Zealand. Okay, so, okay. So it's a big event. Is, is it a foregone clu- conclusion then that the, the third reading of it, it would pass as well? Yes, it okay. re- pr- yeah, it really is. Um, you know, the, it, it would take him... Um, we'll put it this way, the third reading is basically a formality. Okay. Where it goes away, the, um, you know, the legal beagles of Parliament, you know, they go through and they process it. Um, goes for its third reading. It's pretty much a formality. Then, then it's uh, rewritten into from a bill to an act, making it a law, um, and it uh, gets the Governor General stamp on it. Bang down and goes the rubber hammer thing, the pad on the, you know, the uh, rubber stamp thing, and it, it, it's law. So and then you, it becomes law. Okay. Yeah. So you can expect in a in a in a roundabout yeah, just over a month, and um, certainly you know this has been a major, major win for the younger members of of Parliament of all parties. Like, if you look at the National Party, it's got a large, sizable component of socially conservative Christians in in its uh, make-up, in its caucus. The younger members of its own caucus, many of them, have certainly won the argument turning a lot of those socially conservative Christians that would normally vote against something like this uh, turning them in favour of it on the strength of uh, equality and, and principle. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there, there is still quite a lot of division in the religious community, Peter. Uh, uh, for example, the Presbyterian Church voted on this, saying really objects to this particular bill becoming a law. If it does become a law, then um, you know we'll, we'll have another look at it perhaps. But uh, um, it did not like uh, virtually... A, practically, I suppose, an instruction coming from the secular state across to whether or not its its ministers uh, should be allowed to to marry, Mm. Uh, you know, should be forced, should we say, to marry. But of course, you know, this brings in a whole Bill of Rights uh, and human rights um, aspects if if anybody refuses um, to to discriminate, I'm sorry, if anybody discriminates on Mm. the basis of gender. Mm. Uh, then, then there's an issue there. So, yeah, it's it's quite a a, a, a a bill of debate, Peter, amongst those areas. But in wider society, 
it um, certainly seems to have the popular support of the people as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting to see whether it will have an impact on uh, the, the, the very same debate we have here, that uh, we haven't got to the point where uh, uh, the parliament is likely to pass it, but it has been getting closer and closer in uh, in recent years. So uh, yes. it'll be interesting to see what happens yes, and for us here but... and, and, and whether Australians start moving on as to New Zealand uh, <laughs> to, uh, to take it up. Yeah, maybe. You know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, you yeah. know, whether or not New Zealand becomes a, a bit of a, a destination for a time for people who are oh. thinking, well, I'd like to go and get married. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, and it, it, uh, it kind of takes a lot, a lot of people are kind of looking at this in New Zealand, like a certain amount of national pride coming through from this, with New Zealand having been all those years ago the first country in the world to, to legalise uh, or make it possible for women to vote mm. in an election. And it mm. seems absurd in this day and age that at one stage women were prevented from having a vote. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's seen this particular uh, uh, bill that's turning into law pretty soon here um, is um, seen in a similar vein. Yeah, well, yeah. it's uh, yet another thing we, we share in common. Well, South Australia was, one of the, I think, the first state uh, yeah. in Australia to, uh, to right? grant women the right. right. Yeah, so. yeah, good stuff. We're progressive like you guys. Well, we were. Progressive. We were. Good, we were. That, that <laughs> it's not so now. We, uh, we're still yarning on the, on the programme between New Zealand and South Australia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could well be. Um, other, other responses following this vote uh, of, of uh, support or others beyond, besides the, uh, the Christian lobby not happy? Um, I haven't picked up any um, so far. Certainly in the, the debate, there were, there were issues coming through from a few MPs that were brave enough to kind of speak out on this. Brave mm. enough, meaning that they could see that it was not going to win. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but they were in general terms, you know, in the sense that they're saying um, that the one one man uh, who represents one of the electorates in the Waikato, he was saying, and he's in, with the national led um, party. Uh, sorry, the national party is leading in the government at the moment. He he, he was he was basically going on a, on a line where he did not believe that a, um, a kind and just God. Uh, would favour this type of social change. Mm. So, mm. and you can see where that was going. You know, it was digging down into more perhaps some of the uh, the ideas and things that were within the Old Testament, as opposed to uh, some of the other uh, conservative Christians amongst his own caucus colleagues were kind of going on a more well a compassionate kind of religious uh, and, and tolerant and uh, inclusive. Um, argument in, in favour. So th- that's pretty much where the opposition um, aspects of it were, um, except to say, you know, the New Zealand First Party voted as a block, individuals but voted as a block um, to put it to a referendum when, of course, they lost that um, particular pitch mm. in the Parliament last night. All right, on to your drought situation. Um, so basically, that's it's the whole of the North Island that's officially in yeah. drought now, and, and yeah. farmers there. Struggling stock being a big yeah. problem, uh, or feed stock feed a big problem. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, farmers are struggling to feed their stock. Um, they're importing the feed um, at the moment. If importing is the right word, but from the South Island, yeah. um, just to get them by. Um, it's often the other way round uh, that the South Island uh, suffers quite extensive periods of drought in the Otago region and on the Canterbury Plains this time. So North Island, um, and and yeah, um, a lot of emphasis on the. Dairy cows, um, the the milk supply has been affected. For example, without having the proper good and expected nutritious feed at this stage, a lot of the cows are starting to go dry, and they're not not um, staying in milk. And if they go dry, then there's no milk production from them until the spring when they have calves again. And so a lot of the farmers are starting to really get concerned in the sense that their their whole one the revenue stream, if you like is, is um, likely to stop. So the government's done a, a little bit of pressure, um, which it's resisting at this stage to financially assist uh, farmers who are beginning to hit a wall. And it's an interesting thing there that a lot of the farmers are share milkers as opposed to the land owners of the farms. Mm. And the share milkers are the ones that uh, really wear the, uh, the the consequence of this type of thing. But the, the drought, back to the weather, it is... Just absolute. Uh, in my living memory, Peter, I mean, there may be um, precedents to this, but I cannot remember it. Yeah. 
it's dry, it's dry, it's dry. Okay, yeah, dust everywhere, dust everywhere. Yeah. Now, you said uh, in regard to, to, to government assistance, you said mm. under a little bit of pressure, so yeah. from from the farming community, but uh, uh, is that pressure likely to increase? It, oh, I think it will, yeah. particularly when uh, the concerns become uh, able to be illustrated with real-life uh, examples of people, uh, farmers, really hitting the wall, mm. particularly where it becomes more... Uh, more where it begins to affect the overall economy, yeah. um, and that's where the national lead government, in particular, is very vulnerable to pressure from outside. One of its main stakeholder groups, its mates that help it to get into into power, is federated farmers, and uh, they, they, they're starting to get a bit edgy about this. Um, at the moment, uh, the finance minister he fielded uh, calls in Parliament um, over this week to kind of start to think about this. You know, here, here you go. You know, here's a problem developing. The government should be in a position where it is providing some assurance to one of New Zealand's most uh, vital commodity um, industries in mm. the agricultural sector. Um, he's resisting that and saying that many of the farmers uh, have contingencies that they can fall back on it's factored into their own business plans, etc., yeah, etc. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's resisting that type yeah. of aspect at this stage. Okay. Um, uh, uh, forecasters looking further ahead to see you know how how long the drought could go on is there any any optimism in any long range forecast for rain at all or yeah well there, there had been a um, a tropical cyclone that had developed up in the new caledonia mm, area yeah, yeah. and there was talk that that was going to perhaps come down toward the north of the north island of new zealand uh, so it's it's still anticipated that there could be some wash, some rain coming from that, but it is certainly um, still a big question mark around that. If you look on the Met Service maps, you can see the low pressure system way up the top, perhaps you know to the uh, to the east of Townsville at the moment, yeah. which is a long way away from New Zealand. If you look down below. You can see South Australia, below South Australia, where there's occluded fronts and some cold fronts sitting down in that Southern Ocean period. But once again, if they come through, that looks like they may hit the South Island, which isn't in this situation. So North Island's still looking like it probably will be parched for a time yet. OK. Well, we got a desalination plant sitting there doing not a lot at the moment and not sure. uh, not likely to be used for a little while. Shame, you know, if we could pack it up and... Ship it over to you. You could borrow yeah. that for a while. You know, it's funny you should say that. There's been a little bit of talk around the, around the place uh, in the last week. Not, I mean, I mean in the country uh, yeah. about a desalination plant, plant would be a wise thing for some regions in New Zealand to consider. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yes, mm. it was uh, ours was installed at the time of our drought. It's not operational as yet, but as our drought broke. It's uh, yeah. uh, and it's sort of mothballed for the time being. You know, most yeah. refer to it as more of a white elephant. Uh, yeah, you know, it's been a pretty expensive uh, exercise, but yeah, maybe it will pay back. And, and just in in in, uh, in final thing, Peter, uh, down in Wellington, um, the capital of uh, the country, down in the bottom of the North Island, they're yeah. starting to suffer too. Apparently, they've got a couple of weeks of water left in their reservoir. Oh, okay, so a getting... couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, they die when you're getting like that. Mm, well, we'll uh, try and do a bit of a rain dance for you, or maybe with a new pope uh, elected. Maybe he new can uh, he can uh, uh, have a word to somebody to get a bit of rain your way. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps a little bit of white smoke, uh, you know, coming out of the uh, pipe. I understand this morning. So yeah, 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 yeah indeed. New pope on there. All right, so one, many thanks. Have a great week, and we will catch you again next week with more news from your part of the world. Okay, Peter. Well, Thank you. Sue Manning. Sue Manning from uh, livenews.co.nz. And uh, if you missed it earlier, yes, the new Pope has been elected. Uh, the name of the new Pope is to be announced shortly. So we'll keep you up to date on that. It's 29 past five. Making an informed.